Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be part four of the Donkey Kong 3 restore. First thing I wanna do is get this wood base taken off of here that somebody had made two sides of it out of two by fours and the other two sides are the pine that they originally used. So we're gonna knock these off of here and then I wanna fix this corner and get it bondoed in and uh, get my uh, groove and everything back for the T-molding. Um, I got a little bit of Bondo hanging off the bottom here. So I just wanna go around and clean up all the bottom edges first, and then we'll put build a new base on the bottom uh, because it's gonna be easier to fix these edges while the base is off than once it's on because this base should come flush all the way to the side over here like it does on this side. So let's take this apart. I think they just nailed it together. So hopefully it shouldn't be too bad. This is the original there. Um, there might be a screw there. Can't tell. I think it's a nail. But hopefully we can get this apart without damaging a bunch of stuff. I think they're at my pry bar. Okay, let's get this uh, popped off here. I'm splinter the wood a little bit, but there's not really much I could do about that. bunch of staples and stuff I'm gonna to have to cut off <clears throat> and this uh, bottom edge right here is all rough so we're gonna to have to put a little Bondo in there as well so I think what I'm gonna do first is grab some Bondo and fill start filling these in so let me go grab that and then while that Bondo is drying we can cut off all those staples all right get some on these spots Got a bunch of spiders and stuff I need to clean off the bottom. Spider webs. Just kind of gooping it on there a little bit thick. Sand it off after. That corner looks good. Those back ones look all right. that dry I'm gonna go get my cutter and we're gonna cut off those all those staples that are hanging off the bottom there which I don't know if you can see it or not okay let's cut these staples off there's quite a few of them so that's dripping everywhere, sanded off. I'm gonna grab a 
piece of 80 grit sandpaper real quick. All right, we're gonna get this all cleaned up. The sander here, to stay away from the bondo, it's still wet. <laughs> sand this down for a little bit and then I'll come back. Okay, while this bondo is finishing drying, we're going to start cutting new pieces of pine to start making the base. And I know that these, the ones that go from front to back, the original ones are 24 and 3 quarters. And that's to the outside of the miter on each side. So we're going to come over to our miter box here and we are going to uh, cut a couple of these. 24 and 3 quarters to the outside. Now this is a smaller battery operated one, so if I stand this straight up and down like you normally would cut like baseboard or something like that, this saw won't cut all the way down through three and a quarter, three and a half inches. So we're going to actually tilt the head on its side. So we're going to tilt this to 45 degrees and we're going to cut it this way so that we have enough so we can cut all the way through it. So I'm going to cut this a little bit big actually. Let me cut it straight first just to make it a little bit more manageable to cut it down to size. So I said 24 and 3 quarters, so let's cut it to 26 straight first. We need two of them. Let's cut a miter on the one side for both of them. Check my measurements. Yep, 24 and 3 quarters. So now we're just going to go like this. We're going to measure from this outside point to 24 and 3 quarters on both of them. and see if we're good perfect okay we're exactly the same length on both of these so now we have our front and back for each side cut now we need to cut the uh right to left cuts so i know that um this originally is supposed to go against here and against here this bottom is a little bit loose but i don't want to go putting a bunch of screws and stuff from the inside this way it's just going to not look right so what we're going to do is since this bottom's a little loose down here once we get this built we'll glue it and then we'll put a couple screws into the side of the cabinet through the base and then the base is going to get fastened to here so what that's going to do is stiffen all this up without having a bunch of fasteners showing through on the inside like somebody had done a big repair to it 
So we're trying to make it look as original as possible. So now we need to measure from the inside to inside, which is 22 and a half is tight. So 22 and a half. So we gotta cut two more pieces like we just did, but now they're gonna be 22 and a half long rather than 24 and three quarters. So 22 and a half. My blade's starting to get dull. So 22 and a half from the outside point. flip it over and use that. Now let's go check in on the cabinet to make sure it's the right width before we go nailing these together into a square and then all of a sudden it doesn't fit. And we gotta rip it all back apart. Perfect, let's check the other one. Okay, we are good there. So now we can come over here and we'll have to go get a nail gun. Hopefully the sun's not too bright. It's hard to see on my camera, but uh, we're going to nail these together and then we're going to make some braces. Okay, I put a piece of cardboard down because this sheet of plywood, I need to make a back door with part of it. And at $50 a sheet now for half inch cabinet grade plywood is getting ridiculously expensive. So I don't want to drip a bunch of glue all over it and have to sand it and stuff like that. So just put down a piece of cardboard to hold it. So what we're going to do is we're going to mite or we're going to glue and nail all the corners together first. And uh, this is the same height as what the factory was, three and a half inches. It's a standard one by four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some wood glue on here, just a little bit. We're gonna put a little bit on the other surface too. You wanna put the glue on both surfaces because what happens is it soaks into the wood grain, into the end grain. Excuse me. <coughs> Sun makes me sneeze. So now we're gonna hold this together nice and tight on the miter. Make sure it's flush. You wanna try to keep your hands as far away from this nail gun as possible. These are inch and a half brad nails. They could potentially come out and curl around and get your finger. I've seen it happen before, so you gotta be real careful with that. Sure that we're using the right one on the right part okay spin it this way Now these nails on these corners, that's all they're doing is holding this together for right now. We're gonna fasten it better in a few minutes here. So we're gonna glue up this last board.
Okay, I should have some 180 grit on my sanding block here. Now it's always best to take this miter and knock it down. The reason being is when you're moving these cabinets around, if that point is real sharp and you hit it on something, you can actually take a gouge of the wood out. So if you just take some 180 grit here and just knock this edge down, then it's not a real sharp edge and you don't have to worry about it catching on anything. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a piece of two by four. Okay, now we're gonna cut some corners. We're gonna need eight of them total. I'll probably have to go grab another piece. This, hopefully this blade is sharp enough to cut it. Yep, seems fine. So we're just gonna go like this. identical ones I need to go cut three more, so I'm gonna go grab another piece and cut the last three. Okay, I have all those cut right there, eight of them. Now, what I wanna make are little wedges, um, like this, but a little bit small, a little bit smaller in size. So, let me think how I wanna do this. I think if I just put it this way, cut it, I can get two out of this one block. So that these will fit in here. Okay, so those blocks I'm cutting in half are gonna go in the center there on each side. I'm probably gonna do eight of them so that we can uh, really secure this base. We're actually gonna overbuild this from what they did originally, but I just want it to be sturdy. It's getting shipped to Michigan, so we just better off to just make sure it's nice and sturdy. Bees love these yellow tools. They're always all over them. stuff cut what we're going to do now is we're going to put our first two by four on for the bracing but we're not going to put them both on for the corners so we're just going to put one row on for now all on all four corners we're going to glue them and we're going to nail them through the outside and then we're going to put these on glue them on the one side only and nail those on and then we can set this unit into the bottom of the cabinet and then screw two inch screws through here into the bottom of the cabinet on all four of these. And then we'll put our second two by four on there and then a piece of half inch plywood. And that should make it flush with the bottom of this. And then I'm gonna stick these plastic sliders 
on the center of those two by fours. They're only about a quarter inch thick. The reason why I wanna put these on there is for when the cabinet's getting slid around in the future, it'll no longer be slid on this piece of wood and gouging it all up like they originally did. So this is gonna stop that from happening. So let's um, make these corner blocks, glue these in now and nail them. On this, I'm only gonna put glue on the one side because that's not end grain. That's just the regular edge. So we should be fine with glue just on one side with that. So we're gonna kind of hold it in the corner, flush, push down. That dumb bee won't leave me alone. So you can see how that is. Nice and flush. So we're gonna do that to all four corners. Trying to keep you in camera and folk in uh, the screen here best I can. And by putting these in the corner, cut at a perfect 45 degree angle, your base of your cabinet should be nice and square because all these 45s are tight in the corners. So as long as your corners are all lining up, you'll be good. And this one actually slid a tiny bit. I'm just gonna take my hammer and tap it in. Okay. This bottom of this cabinet will never be loose again. It'll rot away before it becomes loose. In. I think I'm going to go tight to the edges of the 2 by 4s because then I know that they'll be evenly spaced all the way around. So I want to put some glue just on the one side for now. In the end, the glue is what's really going to hold these in place rather than these 18 gauge brad nails. The brad nails are just holding it until the glue is dry. nub of wood sticking out here. Okay, now that that is all done, see what it looks like. Let's go sand this Bondo down so that we can get this installed. Um, where's my block at? Here it is. Grab a, put a new piece of 80 grit on here. And we get this knocked down and hopefully straightened out.
Okay, I'm gonna sand this down and round it out and everything and clean it up and then I'll come back. Show you a little trick here. See how this edge is really hanging over? I'm gonna take my cutoff wheel and cut some of it off. It's just going to save you a ton of sanding. Okay, it's so all sanded down and cleaned up. Now, I don't want to get the router out to make this little bit of groove here, so I'm just going to use my cutoff wheel again. And we're just going to cut a new groove in there for the T molding in that Bondo. I don't want to get the router out for that little bit of work. And this is about the exact same width. Okay, so now we're going to fit this base. I know which way it goes. Yep, that way. Hopefully it fits in here. Want to see how it fits? It's going to be tight. Okay. I don't want to set it all the way in there yet. Just wanted to check to make sure it's going to fit. We're going to put some glue on it. Then we're going to slide it in place. Grab my glue. I put glue all over these brackets. Okay, and we're going to put a little bit down these inside edges here. Measure it, make sure we're even on each side. Just trying to put it exactly where it was originally. And we are 16th off on this side. One and a half, one and a half. So we're perfect there. So now what we're gonna do is We're going to drill a couple pilot holes into each one of these braces here. Two inch exterior screws. And we're good. Okay, I got two screws at each side here, in each corner. And now what I'm doing is I'm going around and putting them through this brace on an angle. But you always want to pre-drill this stuff because it will crack on you.
Okay, now that's done. Now we're going to get that second set of blocks. And we are going to glue these on. We're going to put glue on these edges here. And on the bottom. Quite a bit. Stick it right in here. Hopefully it fits. When you screw these ones in, make sure you're not in the same spot as the last ones. If I'm hitting that other screw right there. There we go. Okay, one more. And then we gotta go. I gotta go. I have some scrap half inch cabinet plywood, so I gotta cut some triangles out. And we'll put a piece of half inch down at the bottom here, and that'll make it flush with the edge of the pine. Okay, I'm going to go up in my front garage and I think I have a piece up there. Okay, I got a scrap piece of half inch plywood here. So we're going to cut a three and a half inch wide strip off of here. I'm going to try to cut it on this miter box and see if we can make it. Enough right there. I uh, might need more.
Okay, now we can put these on. These I'm just gonna nail. So we're gonna glue them and nail them. Okay, I had to go grab a couple other screws real quick. Okay, I have inch and a quarter exterior screws. Don't want to use drywall screws. Drywall screws, they shear. The heads will break off of them. Exterior screws are very hard to shear. They usually will bend before they break. I want to put three screws on each side here into the side of the old cabinet. But I don't want to over drill and drill too far and go outside the cabinet. So, just gonna go in until I feel it clear the piece of pine. You can feel it when it hits the other wood. And I'm not countersinking them because I don't want them to go through the other side. So now we can nail on our sliders and the base of this cabinet is done. The base of this cabinet will never fail again. This will be good for as long as this cabinet is around. So we're going to put these on. I'm going to put them right up here. So now we can stand this thing up and it should be nice and sturdy. No more wobbling, no more uh, sitting on an angle. Well, it might sit on a little bit of an angle because of the concrete, but it should be nice and level. You know what? Let me sand that real quick. That little bit of bondo that's sticking out there. As soon as I find what I do with my sanding block, I don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is. is nice and sturdy again so now I'm going to go in the house and we are going to I'm going to go in the house and take measurements and everything for this back door so we can get this back door made now and then after that that's going to end this video this is just showing you guys how I make a new base for a cabinet and a back door 
um, we're gonna duplicate my Donkey Kong Jr. back door. I actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go grab my back door, bring it outside and use that as my template, you know, so we can just measure right off of it rather than making a drawing with paper and stuff like that, which I don't need to do if I just bring the door out here. So I'm gonna go grab that. We're gonna come back and we are going to get this back door cut and made. Okay, I went and grabbed my back door. So now we can measure this. And we have to make a little rabbit cut on the bottom here. If you look, there's like a little uh, half cut out groove so that it slides into the groove in the bottom of the cabinet. So when we measure this back, we need to measure it from this side so that we can get the total height. Fifty and a half, a sixteenth over fifty and a half. Fifty and a half by twenty-three. So I'm going to go out here and mark fifty and a half by twenty-three. grab my straight edge Okay, now we got a measure for the square hole cut out, which we'll come back over to here. And we are going to flip this around, measure it from the other side. I want to measure from the floor because you got that little tongue on there. So four to six, four and a half, four and a half. So we're going to make this our bottom down here. Draw that square out. This ruler is two inches, so we can technically put it between the lines and get our two inch mark. Okay, and the only other thing we have to put up here is the lock hole, which is in the top center, which is seven eighths of an inch down. And we just need to center it. So we're at 23. So uh, 12 and 12 is 24. 11 and three quarters. 11 and a half. So there's our lock hole. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut the square out, drill this lock hole. Now I can use a circular saw for these two cuts and then we'll have to use a multi-tool for the other smaller cuts. multi-tool.
Now these are probably one of the best tools you could buy for the money. You can cut almost anything you want with this and it gives you really good results. So now I gotta get my uh, drill bit and we're gonna drill this hole here for the lock. Okay, now this step drill bit, I'm not gonna go all the way to the end because that's seven eighths. I'm gonna stay between the three quarters and 13 sixteenths. We can cut this out before we yeah let's cut it out first first can use a circular saw to cut this out Okay, now we need to make that groove on the bottom. And rather than getting the router out, we're gonna use the circular saw to make it. Okay, I'm gonna set my circular saw to the half, half of the thickness of the plywood. I'm just gonna do it by eye. Usually you could tell because of the laminate, the layers of plywood, you can figure out where the center of it is. And we're just going to make like two passes to make a groove. So the first one's going to be right up on the edge. I might be able to just cut this off with my knife. I think I got it in one pass. Let's go try it on the cabinet. Okay, I need to go a little bit more. So I gotta do one more pass with the saw. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back. There's no point in me videoing, doing one more pass with the saw and then we'll see if it fits. It's just a little bit tight at the top there. Okay, let's see if it fits now. It fits a little tight here and I can see my, my cut goes, curves up a little bit. So I'm just gonna knock that down right there and then we have to mount the uh, this on the inside of the coin or inside the back door this is the original piece that covers up that vent slit on the back side so let me uh get this back off and go over to the saw horses i'm just going to straighten that edge out real quick
should be good. So now we're going to flip this over onto its backside. And we are going to get this piece of wood mounted over top of this hole. There's still nails sticking out of it, the original nails. I cleaned up all the plywood that was stuck to it for the most part. There's a piece right here I got to get off. And we're going to re-glue it and we're just going to tap it in place and then maybe shoot a couple little brads into it just to hold it until the glue dries. So I got my glue here. I want to try to get this straight. I want to kind of look at it first and then we're going to measure from the bottom up so that we're even. Three inches three inches so that's where we want to be and then right to left we look pretty darn good there so I'm just gonna put a little tiny mark here one here and one over here that's all we need so now I'm gonna put some glue on it then we'll tap it in place with the hammer and then we'll go try to fit this again Hopefully I took enough off that top edge for it not to drag. That looks pretty darn good there. Inch and a quarter. My nails are inch and a half. So this is inch and a quarter, that's half inch, that's inch and three quarters. So my inch and a half nail should be perfect. I think I gotta go grab more. I don't think there's enough in here. Yep, let me go grab a couple nails real quick. Here's my inch and a half, 18 gauge brad nails. Okay, let's go see if this thing fits. Perfect. Now we have one less last thing to do where the cord comes out right here. Half of the holes in the bottom piece, the other half of the holes going through the door. So I need to grab a drill bit so that we can drill the top part into the bottom of the door. So let me get that. Okay, I think it's a 3 8 drill bit. I'll clean up those chips afterwards. All right. I think I'm gonna take a tiny bit more off the top of that door because it's just dragging a tiny bit, just ever so slightly. And I don't know if over time, if the wood will swell up from humidity or not. So I think I'm gonna take a tiny bit off of here just so that it doesn't drag as bad. But other than that, guys, this is gonna end part four. We successfully rebuilt the bottom of the base and a new back door that looks just like the original one. If you take a look here, you can see how that looks with the vent in the bottom and everything. And here's an original one. So we have a nice, perfect match. So next step, next video is we are going to get this thing sanded and painted. After we sand and paint it, we will be putting the artwork on probably a day or two after it's painted because I like to let that paint dry and let the um, solvents come out of the paint before I put vinyl on there because I don't want to trap any solvents under the, under the vinyl because it could create bubbles in the vinyl. Um, once we do that, we just have to put the artwork, T-molding, put the monitor back in it, clean up the power supply and stuff and bolt that back in and we will be done with this project. It'll be on its way to uh, Michigan. So, all right, guys, if you're liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, 
Any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys later.